Good morning, it's your friend Bridget here. I was sitting here petting my cat, but then he got up and decided to eat. Loser. <laughs> Let's talk about pricing. So I'm in some marketing groups and I I saw a person say like, oh, this client is micromanaging me and it's driving me bananas or whatever. That's basically the gist of it. And the truth is that the higher your prices are, the easier the clients are. Why? Because the people who pay those prices are paying to trust you and they know that you're an expert. And so they're going to not micromanage you. The people who are real white knuckled with their money are so worried that things aren't going to go right. They're so worried about being cheated or being taken advantage of that they're constantly meddling in um so they say like the higher the money the better the client it's kind of true that way if your passion is to help small business owners then the micromanaging is something you have to handhold through because that's always going to be like that it's when they become uh larger small businesses because small business can be up to like 50 million a year or something ridiculous like that startup business that's kind of not wanting to spend their personal money and whatnot and then there's the business that's running and it's like okay hiring a vendor hiring a consultant is much cheaper than an employee but i can't just keep doing this those people are less likely to micromanage you. Now, if they do, then you need to go to your exit plan. This is why you have client work and it's not 100% of your income. You can raise your prices, get other clients, and then phase those people out. Um, you can do it politely. You can say, um, I think that your money might be spent better with a virtual assistant, which I've done, or... Um, we have different communication styles, which is totally fine. We have different, I mean, you're not married to them. You're a vendor. So unless you're breaking some contract or something, you know, you can ease out of that relationship because you have an exit strategy of having more clients, like have 20% more clients than income that you need so that you can absorb that cost. And in the same thread, in the same group or in another group, maybe it was the admin bar, um, I can't remember now, they said um, there's some rule about never having a client be more than 25% of your income. That kind of makes sense. I'd be like, uh, it's good to have like 20, 20, 20, or 20 is the max, because like if you have 20% more than you need, then you really don't want to lose a client that's 25%. You want to lose a client that's 20% or less. See? So your pricing does matter, not just to your income or your revenue as a business, but to the clients that you attract. If you're just starting, then you're going to have to experiment with your prices, and it's okay to raise your prices with each client. I have clients right now at three different price levels because... That's just how they came into the business. So that's fine, you know, and then stick to it. If they don't like those prices, that's okay. They can find somebody else. It doesn't have to be you. But again, this is where mad money comes in. This is where having more clients than you need comes in. Um, micromanaging comes from insecurity. It comes from fear, uh, fear that you'll do a bad job, fear that it comes from misunderstanding. And you could just say, you know what? This isn't the way I work. It's totally fine. You're allowed to say that. It's not offensive. And if that person gets offended, well, that's fine because they're not your client. Like that's not who you want as a client. So, right? Like, that's the whole thing is, do you want to work that way? You're doing your own business so that you don't have to work that way. And pricing is part of it. So, hi, Diesel. See you later. Bye.
Meow, meow. Say goodbye. Where's the cat? Hey, say goodbye to the people. Ha, ha, ha.